Thank you. The scriptures that we're using uh, today is coming from the Gospel of John, the 17th chapter. And if you have your Bibles, you turn there with me, please. I'll be reading the first five verses. After saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. For you have given him authority over everyone. He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, the one you have sent to earth. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we shared before the world began. Amen and amen. Amen. You all may be seated. You may be seated. Now. And forgive me. Uh, I didn't mention that we're using the new, the new living, new new life translation, the life application study Bible. It might read just a little different from uh, from the King James, but I, I think we'll be uh, we'll be okay. So let's let's bow our heads. Let's bow our heads. <clears throat> God, we thank you again uh, for this moment, and we thank you for this privilege to be able to be in your pulpit today. And especially, Father, uh, on the day of my birth uh, that you chose and allowed me to come to this world and, and to be able to breathe your air, Lord, for all these uh, many years now, we give thanks. And Lord, um, for what you decide to do in my life, Lord, as you brought me up through a lot of trials and tribulations, Father, not even knowing... <clears throat> Really, where I was born, all I could do was receive what my teenage mother said and where I was born. I, I didn't have no birth certificate, Father, but, but you have worked all of that out, Father. I mean, you worked it out so tremendously, Lord, and I, I thank you so much for that. So, Father, I ask now that you would move me out of the way and protect me from myself. Lord, I need you so much, and I thank you so much. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray. And God's people said, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Well, <laughs> we're using for uh, our um, subject this morning, <clears throat> are you growing into oneness with Jesus. Are you growing into oneness with Jesus? And of course, uh, I cannot answer that question for you, and you cannot answer that question for me. Is that right? Amen. Yes, yes. Now, I want to share with you my role today is just to continue to encourage you with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, listen, I've been coming here now for almost five years, and this man of God, right, <laughs> preaches the gospel every time the Lord allows him to stand in this pulpit. <laughs> so, 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 so I will not be sharing anything with you that you have not what? Heard before. All right, hallelujah. <laughs> yes. So so we will be just primarily encouraging today. Amen. 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 Now, also, we'll the gospel of John, the 17th chapter. So we're gonna be dealing with a lot of verses in this chapter. So 
So uh, just bear with me a little bit. Now, this entire chapter is Jesus' prayer. Uh, it's also referred to as the high priestly prayer, I believe. From it, we learn that the world is a tremendous battleground where the forces under Satan's power and those under God's authority are at what? War. Yes, yes. We, we, yes and we know this. We ain't about. Satan and his forces are motivated by bitter hatred for Christ and his forces. Jesus prayed for his disciples, including those of us who follow him today. Isn't it wonderful that Jesus is still praying for us? He prayed, he prayed that God would, <coughs> that God would keep his chosen believers <coughs> safe from Satan's power, setting them apart and making them pure uh, and holy, uniting them through his truth. Yes. Mm. Yes. This thought can further be seen in John's Gospel, the 16th chapter, verses 26 and 27 also. Yes. Then you will ask in, his, in my name. I'm not, saying, I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and believe that I came from God. A few days ago, during my devotion time in preparation for this sermon, Oswald Chambers shares a thought of these, on these verses taken from his, his classic book, <clears throat> My Utmost for His Highest. And that devotional time, day, the subject was untroubled relationship. Yeah. Then he says, uh, he says, in that day, you will ask in my name, that is in my nature, in my nature. Not you will use my name as some magic word, but you will be so intimate with me that you will be one with me, that you will be one with me. Chambers continues by saying, that day is not a day in the next life, but a day meant for here and what? Now, for here and now. For the Father himself loves you. The Father's love is evident. The Father's love himself loves you. The Father's love is evidence that our union with Jesus is complete and absolute. Yes. Our Lord does not mean that our lives will be free from external difficulties and uncertainties, but that just as he knew the Father's heart and mind we too can be lifted up into heavenly, into heavenly places through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Yes. So, that, so that he can reveal the teachings of God to us, yes. unquote. Now, let me get back to our text for the morning was John 17 and following, verses 1 through 5. We're going to look in now at verse 3, John 17, <coughs> verse 3. And this is the way to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. <laughs> how, how do we get eternal life. 
Jesus tells us clearly here, by knowing the God, the Father himself, through his Son, Jesus Christ, eternal life requires entering into a personal relationship with God in Jesus Christ. When we admit our sin and turn away from it, Christ's love lives in us by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So, so we are able, as Pastor said last Sunday, we are able to experience eternal life right now. Yeah. We don't have to wait until we close our eyes to experience eternal life. Yeah. Eternal life is present with us right now if Jesus is what? Alive. Yes, sir. And well in our lives. Amen. <laughs> we thank you. Now let's look at verse 5. Now, Father, bring me into the glory we share before the world began. Before the world began. Before Jesus came to earth, he was one with God. At this point, when his mission on earth was almost finished, Jesus was asking, was asking his father to restore him to his original place of honor and authority. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Jesus' resurrection and ascension and Stephen's dying exclamation, we noticed in Acts, the seventh chapter, verses 55 and 56. Stephen says, but filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. This is Stephen's the martyr. He, he looked and he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Oh, isn't that something? Yes, he attests. He attests that Jesus did return to his exalted position at the right hand of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Now, of course, Stephen, we know Stephen was one of the first martyrs of the church. And Stephen was speaking what? Truth to power. Those religious folk, Stephen was telling them about the prophecies of the Old Testament and how Jesus would come and, and they got tired of hearing it and they picked up stones and, st and what? And stoned him to death. Hallelujah. But we have to be, we, have, we still have to be mindful and speak truth to power. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> now, verses 6 through 9. I'm going to do like Pastor Blaylock would say, that's homework for you, okay? <laughs> so we can kind of move on a little further because we don't want to just keep you too long, and I don't want to wear my what? Welcome out. Okay. Now, <laughs> let's look at uh, verse 10. All who are mine belong to you. And you have given them to me, so they bring me glory. So they bring me <laughs> glory. What, what did Jesus mean when he said, uh, they bring me glory? God's glory is the revelation of his character and presence. The lives of Jesus' disciples reveal his character, and he is present to the world through them. Now, 
does your life reveal Jesus' character and presence? Yes, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, of course, again, that's one of those rhetorical questions that we can only answer for ourselves. Does your life reveal Jesus' character and presence? Are you growing into what? Oneness, Oneness. with Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Now, verse 11 says, I am now departing from the world. They are staying in this world, but I am coming to you. Holy Father, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. Yes. In other words, right. Jesus is praying that we would become what? One with the Father, yes, as he is one with the Father. Yes. Now, now that is Jesus' desire for us. Yes. And I don't know about you, yes. but I want to be able to answer Jesus' prayer on, on my behalf. Yes, sir. I, I want to continue to grow into his oneness and his what? Divine likeness. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Jesus was asking the disciples be united in harmony and love as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are united, the strongest of all unions. Now, verse 12 and 13. During my time here, I protected them, Jesus is praying, I protected them by the power of the name you gave me. I guarded them so that not one was lost, except the one headed for destruction, as the scriptures foretold. Now, men and women, girls and boys, who choose to be lost, that is what? Their choice. Their choice. Yes, because Jesus came to save everybody that would have enough sense, enough understanding to receive him as their what? Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. So, so those who are choosing to go to destruction, that is their choice. Yes. And all we can do is continue to what? Pray for them. And, and do the very best we can to live our lives so when they see us, they will be able to see some light that's coming from us. And, and then... <laughs> When they ask us, well, what is it about you? How you are able to keep your head on straight uh, with all of this mess going on around us every day? But, but you seem like that you still keep a smile on your face and that you still have some what? Joy in your heart. <laughs> and then we can tell them it's not have nothing to do with me but the one who lives, hallelujah, on the inside of me. Yeah, I can, I can tell you a little bit about him. Yeah. <laughs> hallelujah. You're good to you, doctor. Thank you, fine. <laughs> and, and, then, and then he says, now, verse 13, now I am coming. I am coming to you. <laughs> I told them many things while I was with them in this world so they would be filled with my joy. Isn't that something? Jesus is saying this prayer with his disciples and he's getting ready to go to Jerusalem. He's getting ready to go to the cross. But he's taking time to let them know that there is still joy involved. Yes, sir. <laughs> joy 
Joy is a common theme in Christ's teaching. Yes, sir. He, uh, he wants us to be joyful. Yes, sir. Yes. The key to immeasurable, immeasurable joy is living in intimate, in intimate contact with Christ. The source of all joy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When, when we do, we will experience God's special, special care yes. and protection and see the victory God brings even when defeat seems certain. Even in the midst of trials and tribulation, we're still able to experience joy. Be because he's going to deliver us. Yes. As, as I've been sitting up there and sitting down here and listening to Pastor Blaylock for these last uh, five years or so, every day in his life has not been howdy, howdy. You understand? <laughs> yes, sir, because he, he will talk about how when you all were building this church and uh, Y'all was having some concerns about the finances and all. But he talked about how God came through. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and he talked about when he was out of town and a storm came through. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and a thumb storm came through Jackson, Tennessee and took the home that they was living in but preserved his wife and family. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. So that's, that's what we're talking about. When, when you have an intimate relationship with him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> he will protect you. He will bring you through. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's a... <laughs> He's a wonderful savior. Whew. Hallelujah. He said, verse 14, he said, I have given them your word. And the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. The, the, the world hates Christians because Christians' values differ oh, yeah. from the world's. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Because Christ's followers don't cooperate with the world oh, by joining their sin, they are living witnesses against the world's immorality. <laughs> the world follows Satan's agenda. And Satan is the avowed enemy of Jesus and his people. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know about you. You may wonder a little bit now why the church, why the church is not being persecuted. Because once upon a time in history, the church and Christians were being persecuted. Because we can remember, of course, I was a young, young boy, teenager and all, but you all remember when the King movement, the Civil Rights Movement was going on during that time, and, and Christians were being persecuted yes, because Christians were standing up for what was right. Yeah, and, and they were being persecuted. Yes, but it appears now, somehow, we as the church have acquiesced and it does not appear that the world cares about what we are doing anymore. Huh? Yeah. So is we might need to rethink some things that we are doing. We may not be standing up for Jesus as much as we what used to. Yes, sir. Because when the world don't take notice of you. Then, then the word, <laughs> then, then it's something about something that we are not what doing, yes, sir. because the authentic church of Jesus Christ is going to be what persecuted. 
I just thought I'd put that on your heads. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes, We're going to ha hasten on now. He said, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. So when we get what? Too comfortable with the world, then we know that we are not living like we what should be living as a Christian. When, when we get just too comfortable with what's going on in society and, and we are accepting in and everything that, that goes. Uh, it, it's something wrong with that picture. Yeah, it's something, something, <laughs> it's something wrong. It's something wrong with that, my brothers and my sisters. Because uh, we live and we serve a God, you know, that, that separates and let us know that we can't do in and everything. We can't just what? Talk any kind of way all the time. Ooh, have mercy. In verse 17, he says, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. A follower of Christ becomes pure and holy through believing and obeying the word of God. Listen to what he said in Hebrews uh, chapter 4, verse, verse 12 and 13. He says, indeed, the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. Yes. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions, what, of the heart. Yes. And, and before him, no creature is hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one to whom we must render an account. You know, our lives are in what? Open book to the living God. Yes, he knows all of our thoughts before we thank them. I believe you can find that in the 139th Psalm. He, he just know all there is to know what about us. Yes, yes. and of course, we have to be so, so ever mindful about how we are what? Living our lives. Yes. That's why we ask the question, are you growing into what? Oneness with Jesus. Yes, uh -huh. and we have uh, so much to, to wrestle with as we grow yes. because sometimes it appears that we don't what have enough time to spend with Jesus yes. now I don't know about you you know I know you come to church on a regular basis yes sir but uh, how is it during your week how is it during your week uh, you do you have a little time for your personal devotional life uh, or, or do you even have a personal devotional life yeah I just want to ask you that personal question because in order to grow into oneness with Jesus you have to have a personal devotional life you, you have to uh, take some time on a daily basis to find some scripture that that you like yes, find some scripture that will what encourage you yes. yeah yeah you, you just have to take some time to, to have some prayer time for yourself you just have to have some quiet time for yourself yes. Yes. <laughs> allow him to 
speak to you every what? Once in a while. Yeah, it's wonderful and good to come to church every Sunday. But it's important also for you to have personal time with him. We're going to continue now and try to close. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just as, verse 18, just as you sent me into the world, I'm sending them into the world. Yes. Jesus, Jesus didn't ask God to take believers out of the world, but instead to use them in the world. Because Jesus sends us into the world. We should not try to escape from the world, nor should we avoid all relations with non-Christians. We are called to be salt and light. And of course, you, I'm gonna just reference this Matthew 5, 13 and 16. And you know uh, what salt does as a preservative. Yes. yes, you know what salt is as a preservative. And that's the way our lives uh, should be as Christians. We are to be salt and we are to be what? Light. Light. Yes, sir. Excuse me, in this dark and what? Dreary world yes. in which we're living. Yes, sir. People today need to see light yes. and they need to see it every day. Every yes, sir. Day. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and you know, our lives, that wherever we go, whether or not it's at the Kroger, at the Walmart, at the, um, the Dollar General, uh, everything's a dollar. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're saying was was. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah. Well, anyway, wherever we are. Whether we out at KFC, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Chatters, wherever we are, our lights are to be what? Shine. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. And we are to do the work that God sent us to do. Yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, yes. I'm going to try to put it to a close in just a moment. Because I know we're not used to going this long. Let me see. Okay, okay, okay. okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Y'all forgive me. All right. Okay. Let, yeah, let's, let's go on down to verse 21 and 22, and I'm going to try to try to close it out right quick. Yeah. Oh, let me see. No, I need to look at this one. Verse 19, and I give myself as a holy sacrifice to them, for they can be made holy by your truth. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice to them, so they can be made holy by your truth. Yes. Hallelujah. And I want to say to you, over my journey, I haven't heard uh, a whole lot of uh, Baptist preachers uh, preach on holiness. But I want you to know your pastor is one of the first Baptist preachers that I've heard to speak on holiness and emphasize holiness. Because he knows that without holiness, we're not going to be able to what? See God. Is that right? Yeah. And, and, and he understands that holiness is not a denomination. Holiness is a way what? A way of life for the followers of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah, see, some people want to say that holiness 
just belong to the what? Pentecostals. Yes. No, holiness does not belong to the Pentecostals. Holiness belongs to every child of God. Amen. Yes, yes. And, yeah. Let me just share this uh, personal thing with you just a moment. Uh, I remember I was walking, taking my walk one day uh, out there on the Primitive Trail in uh, Peoria, Illinois. And the Spirit spoke just as plain as I'm trying to speak to you today. He said, you need to learn more about what it means to live holy. Yes, he did. And, uh, and, I, and I, 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 I stopped. I said, what? You know? Yeah. Because yeah. I had been preaching there over 20 some years. And I thought I was doing what? Pretty good. Yes, sir. Yeah, but evidently, it was something going on in my life where he had to what? Check me. Yeah. Yes, sir. And, and let me tell you, I'm so glad he checked me because that's the role of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit what? Has to check us sometimes. Yes, sir. And I don't mind testifying. He had to check me. And, and, I, and I straightened up and tried to do better. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Lord. When, when can I close this thing? How am I going to close it, Lord? Okay. Okay. All right. Verse, verse 21. I, I pray. I pray that they all be one, just as you and I are one. As you are what? In me. Father, and I am in you. And may they be what? In us. So the world will believe you sent me. Father, what? Son and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I, I have given them the glory you gave me. So they may be what? One as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as, as much as you love me. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah and hallelujah. We just thank you. We just thank you so much, Father. We thank you so much for everything. Jesus, Jesus' great desire for his disciples was that they become one. 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 <laughs> he wanted them unified as a powerful witness to the reality of God's love. Are you, are you helping to unify the body of Christ? Yes. Are you helping to unify the body of Christ, yes. the church? Uh, you can pray for other Christians. Uh, you can avoid gossip, Lord have mercy. Build others up, work together in humility. Give your time, give your time money and exalt Christ. Jesus say, if I be what? If I be lifted up, I will draw all men and women, girls and boys unto me. And the church said, amen. amen. <laughs>